what are the best investments for maximizing the growth of your portfolio and minimizing downside risk. I've always said that these two in combination are extremely important. Now, a staple for many investors are the very popular S&P 500 ETFs like SPY or VOO. But there are many alternative investments available that are able to outperform them. You just have to put some time into researching and sifting. And when looking for an alternative investment, I always like to try to find those that use a more creative way of asset allocation that sets it apart from the major indexes like the S&P 500, because that way it gives the portfolio an edge for the future. I mean, what is the point if majority of investments are market cap weighted with big tech at the top? You're not giving yourself diversification. And especially right now, given the growing emphasis on big tech with ridiculous valuations and a growing risk of a correction with heightened levels of volatility. So jumping into a market like this poses a lot more risk than rewards. And I have emphasized this in my previous videos, like using JEPQ high income ETF as opposed to the QQQ. But again, this edge is only useful if it is able to outperform the index in the long run. Otherwise, there's no point. So today I'll be covering an ETF that has historically been able to outperform the S&P 500. But most importantly, can right now give investors risk averse exposure to alternative growth with substantial dividends, providing investors a very powerful long term investment to replace the S&P 500 in today's climate. And this brings me to COWZ, which is the Pacer US Cash Cows 100 ETF. And this is still amongst one of my favorite ETFs strictly because of the simplicity and effectiveness of its strategy. So let me explain. To begin, let's run through the fund's fundamentals so that you can get a better understanding of the ETF. COWZ was established on December 16th, 2016, so has a pretty good history for investors to track. The fund currently has over $23 billion of assets under management, and the fund's assets under management have nearly doubled since I last reviewed it nine months ago, so it clearly has a large and growing fan base behind it, and that is always a good sign of a successful ETF. The fund currently has a dividend yield of around 2%, which doesn't seem like much, but to be honest, for a fund that has such powerful growth and momentum, and not to mention amazing risk mitigation, an almost 2% yield is fantastic. Since inception, the fund has slightly outperformed the S&P 500 in total returns, returning 165% as opposed to 161%. But the true outperformance of this fund comes within the last four years after the COVID crash, where the fund managed to outperform the S&P 500, returning 180% as opposed to 117%. And year to date, the funds have a relatively similar return of around 10%. This is one of the few ETFs that has been able to keep up with the S&P 500 during this AI boom without the concentration exposure, which I find amazing. Now, I don't like to cherry pick dates, but the last time I reviewed the ETF, I didn't go over its underperformance in 2018. And the very reason the ETF underperformed in 2018 could be the reason it will outperform in 2024 and onwards. And this is where things get really interesting, so pay attention. So how does this ETF work and is its strategy effective for 2024 and onwards? To begin, COWZ starts with the Russell 1000 index and screens companies based on their average projected free cash flow and earnings for the next two fiscal years. So companies with negative earnings or free cash flow are filtered out and the remaining companies are ranked according to their 12 month free cash flow yield. And then the top 100 names are included in the index with individual company weightings capped at 2%. This graph right here gives you a better picture of the fund's selection process. So let's break that down. And first, we'll circle back to free cash flow. This is the one metric that even Warren Buffett himself considers to be the most effective at successfully valuing companies. And I feel that free cash flow, along with GARP investing, holds the key to long term success. Free cash flow is anything that remains after the company has paid for its expenses, taxes, and really anything that's needed for the company to run and function. A company's free cash flow can be used to pay down debt, pay dividends to investors, do stock buybacks, or expand the business through other means. A company with a positive free cash flow indicates that it is generating more cash than it needs to maintain operations, and is then able to utilize that surplus to invest in growth or provide a dividend. It all signifies financial flexibility and stability. And the bear market of 2022 was the perfect example of how companies with strong free cash flow are able to provide stability for investors. COWZ was able to outperform the S&P 500 by almost 20% in 2022. This outperformance was better than SCHD and JEPI, and frankly, there is no other ETF that was able to mitigate risk as well as this ETF in 2022. And that is why the ETF is actually regularly compared with SCHD and the S&P 500 as an 
alternative investment. And that is why free cash flow is and always will be one of the most effective ways to value a company's long-term prospect. Now, let's take a quick break to talk about today's video sponsor, Style AI. This is such a unique platform and super useful for anybody who wants to build a website and get more traffic. In order to have a successful website and rank at the top of Google search results, you need good SEO which can be a little bit tricky to figure out on your own, but now you don't have to. You can go to ustyle.ai, sign up and click on Sayona, then paste your website's URL in there and Sayona will basically audit your entire website and learn about your business in the process. Then it will give you your SEO score and make suggestions on where you need to make changes. And yes, you guessed it, it will literally automatically make those changes for you. This can be generating new keywords and titles. It will even write new blog posts and make code changes weekly so that your website can rank higher and your customers can easily find you. So definitely take advantage of this tool. I will link it for you guys in the description down below. Now back to the video. Now circling back to the fund's prospectus, you see this percentage, which is known as the cash flow yield. And this measures the return generated by a company's free cash flow relative to emphasis on relative to the price that investors are paying for the stock. This is extremely important. A higher cash flow yield indicates that the company's free cash flow is generating a higher return relative to its market value, which from an income perspective makes the stock more attractive. And the emphasis here is relative to market value. When you look at the fund screening process, the cash flow yield increases for every step, but the PE ratio, which is the price to earnings ratio, decreases. And the price to earnings ratio is a very common metric used to determine whether a company is trading at a fair valuation. Now, just for reference, negative free cash flow suggests that a company is using more cash than it generates, which means that they may require external financing, resulting in reduced financial flexibility. And companies that have the lowest amount of free cash flow are the ones that are most sensitive to interest rate hikes. And that is why the ETF was able to mitigate risk so well in 2022, as interest rate hikes didn't really affect its underlying holdings. So companies that have the highest levels of free cash flow are often considered highly favorable and preferred choices for investors, which is why the ETF has gained so much popularity. And really everything else about a company, whether it's sales, branding, or good management, don't really have as much of an impact as it all simply points towards free cash flow. Now, COWZ currently has 103 different stocks in its holdings, and it is rebalanced every quarter. And interestingly enough, the ETF just underwent its quarterly reconstitution. When you look at the fund's holding breakdown, you can see a rather strong emphasis on energy stocks, along with consumer cyclicals, industrials, and healthcare. What's really important to remember is that certain sectors of the market generally exhibit higher levels of free cash flow due to their business models or industry dynamics. Statistically, Sectors with the highest levels of free cash flow include energy, consumer goods, healthcare, and technology. And the reason for this is simple, long-term and consistent demand. Energy companies such as oil and gas producers often generate really high levels of free cash flow due to stable demand and long-term contracts. Now, of course, this video wouldn't be complete without talking about the dividend yield. As free cash flow expands, this can give insights into the health of not only the business, but also the company's ability to grow their dividends. When looking at the fund's dividend growth history, you see a general strong upward trend. Yes, you had two years where the trend was broken, but again, there's always going to be some sort of a minor hiccup. And the dividend yield has recently declined from 2.1% all the way down to 1.9%, but that is strictly because of the strong momentum and growth the ETF has sustained over the past couple of months. So if you're an investor that is focusing on dividend income and dividend growth, don't let that deter you because at the end of the day, total return is what's most important. Now, going back to the fund's prospectus, there's one thing that I wanted to highlight, and that is the average projected free cash flow and earnings over the next two fiscal years. This is especially effective because it is using forward-looking data to evaluate companies. It looks at estimates of a company's future expected financial performance and cash generating capabilities in the future. You see, typically other alternative ETFs use backwards looking data like historical dividend growth and dividend yield as a way of evaluating companies. But dividends are simply a byproduct of free cash flow. So every time I find a fund that emphasizes forward looking data, it really catches my attention. 
Other aspects of the ETF that really help it stand out for investors is for one, it's even spread of assets. The fund only allocates around 2% for every holding and therefore it is not top heavy. And this adds an extra step to mitigate risk. On top of that, the ETF is amongst the few funds that has a five star Morningstar rating. And Morningstar's five star rating indicates strong performance compared to its peers, along with superior risk adjusted returns and consistency. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the future prospects of the ETF. And this kind of circles back to its underperformance in 2018. You see, at this point right here, interest rates were cut rather rapidly. And as we all know, companies that rely on external financing for their growth prospects are heavily affected by interest rates. The lower the interest rates are, the cheaper it is for them to borrow money and finance rapid growth. So the moment we saw a rate cut is when big name technology and growth companies saw a very strong rally. And that is why the CTF underperformed in 2018 strictly because of its emphasis on companies that are resilient to interest rate hikes, giving it a rather muted performance during this time frame. But now, looking forward into 2024 and 2025, there have been growing concerns about a high interest rate environment for longer, strictly due to stickier inflation and a resilient economy. Now, I've highlighted this many times before, but just recently, a member of the Federal Reserve mentioned that they only expect one rate cut for 2024, as opposed to the three rate cuts that we were initially promised. Well, I shouldn't say promised, I should say expected. So if we think about it, there's a high chance of higher interest rates for the next few years. And unless the economy goes into a recession, there's likely no need for rapid rate cuts. And of course, right now, the boom of artificial intelligence is what is driving major indexes like the S&P 500. But like I said before, there's a growing risk in the sector that investors should take immediate notice of and maybe start using different investment tactics to help mitigate their risk exposure. And that is why COWZ can be a fantastic investment because it puts itself in a position of continued growth strictly because of its emphasis on free cash flow. Now, I do have to say that there are some issues with the fund, most notably the high expense ratio of 0.49%, which I find rather ridiculous. I mean, this puts it in line with high income ETFs. But clearly that has not deterred investors strictly judging by the rapid flow of assets into the ETF in recent years. Warren Buffett has even mentioned in his annual letter that common yardsticks such as dividend yield, the ratio of price to earnings or book to value, and even growth rates have nothing to do with valuation, except to the extent they provide clues to the amount and timing of cash flows into and from the business. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.